I don't know. I don't know how I've made it so far without one of these. In fact, I should have bought this and then a camera. What'd you say? Oh, let's cut the crap. Okay. This is the Polar Pro Quartz Line Circular Polarizer Filter. There are definitely other cheaper polarizer filters you could buy, but this one from Polar Pro is one that I've seen for so long on YouTube. People have used it and commented on it, you know, the durability of it and the quality of the photos you get that it convinced me to spend my own money on this specific one. You know, I always say don't only buy what people talk about on YouTube, but I think it's important to educate yourself on what these things do, how they can add value to your work so that, you know, you can make an educated decision. So I gave this to one of my colleagues to go out there and tell you how and why you should use one. But before I do that, I want to tell you a pro tip I've learned myself from the pros. When it comes to buying any sort of filter, you should never buy the filter size of your current lens or lenses. You should always buy the biggest one possible so that you can maybe invest in these step up and step down rings because then you don't need to change your filter every time you buy a new lens. So the Polar Pro is 82 millimeters, my Tamron lenses are 67 and now thanks to these I can use them just fine. Okay, now I'll switch to my colleague because I know he's super excited to tell you about this. In fact, maybe me even too excited. Let's see. Alex? Exactly, Alex. Yes, so we're here today in this amazing Danish weather. You don't know what time it is. You can look in the sky, you think maybe it's 6, 7 in the evening, the sun is about to set, but no, it's 9 in the morning. Welcome to Denmark. I just bought a new car specifically. <laughs> I bought a car specifically for this shoot because I have money to put like this. What we want to do now is get out these reflections we have on the car. As you can see, you probably can see it on the hood of the car. We have the reflection of the trees. And when we take photos of cars, we really want to take that away, right? Let me show you what I have here. I have my A7 IV with the Tamron 28 to 75 and the piece of resistance. The CPL, the, blah, 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 the Polar Pro CPL filter. So what I want to do first is obviously take a couple of photos without the filter and then with the filter to explain exactly how this works and what kind of environments you can use it. Because obviously in a full sunny day, this is amazing to have. Also an ND filter, but we're not talking about NDs today, only about circular, cir bleh, circular polarizer filters. Circular polarizer filter. Circular polarizer? What I really want to mention is that I'm not afraid to take this photo a little bit underexposed. So I would really go with my aperture maybe up to 5, 6 or even 7. Put my ISO all the way down to maybe even 200 because obviously we're taking these photos raw. And of course one of the reasons of why I even brought a tripod here today is so I can put my shutter speed all the way down because if I would be you know run and gunning this shoot I would have to really put a higher shutter speed otherwise we get that uh, blurry movement right the the blurry movement yeah the motion blur here right now as you can see the sun I, i've said this in a lot of videos the sun is in the clouds so the clouds are pretty much acting like a soft light so i kind of like the reflections in the car sometimes you want some reflections in the water on the ground or maybe even in the car but in this specific scenario we want less of those reflections if you can see in the before and after picture in the after picture with the cpl you can actually see inside the car that's how much difference this makes and I'm not sure if this is obvious or not, but you don't just put the filter on and then start taking pictures of the car. Of course, if you change your angle and the light is coming a bit differently, you have to adjust it, right? That's why it's a circular one. You, you, you spin it until you like the, the, the image you get. So of course, now I want to maybe take a side photo from here. Alex is back in the studio while I'm here freezing my fingers off. Of course, always complaining, but he wants to be a YouTuber. Shut up and take photos in the call, man. There's a lot of instances you would want to use a polarizer filter, not just when you're shooting cars. I believe Alex is at the lake right now to show you how much a difference it makes when we're dealing with water reflections. Alex? <laughs> Alex? <laughs> 
Alex. <laughs> Alex. What? Can you take some photos of the lake, please? Oh, uh, look at me, I'm Alex. Can you take some photos of the lake, please? <laughs> Shut up, you literally talk the same way. We're the same person. So, as you can notice in these before and after photos, when using the polarizer filter, we can actually see at the bottom of the lake. Alright, I would love to hear if you have any filters of your own, if so, which ones, how are you using them, are you planning to buy any anytime soon, let me know. Okay, now I dare you, click on all those buttons under the video, except for the thumbs down, don't, don't click on this one. Look, I really appreciate it if you've watched so far, it helps my channel a lot. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Ciao.